Well, it's been a little over a year since Rick converted his camper and he's turned my world upside down. In a good way. Hi, I'm Rick. I'm Sharon. And we are Cargo One. Cargo Conversion Building Plan. Talk about this design because this design is very simplistic and you did that on purpose. So why did you do this? Well, one, I'm not a real big fan of building things rustic. and. The reason is that like you leave a lot of rough wood inside a, a van or you try to build or cover walls using pallet lumber. It usually requires so much sanding and so much labor in order to get an even halfway decent result. And I wanted quick. I was more willing to spend a few dollars and not try to build everything inside this camper with reclaimed material. So. Well, nothing was really expensive, although you did buy cabinets. I bought cabinets people. new. I bought the refrigerator new. The wall coverings and the ceiling and the floor in here, oh, none of these items were really that terribly expensive. Right. I mean, I think I probably was able to do cover the walls, the floor, and the ceiling in here for about $400 or less. But it has a very simplistic and a clean look, and it's just, you can wipe it down. Well, that's it, and it's easy to keep clean. It's not something that's gonna constantly attract, collect dust. It's not something that, you know, you use this old pallet wood where a board was already split, and six months from now, you hook a thread of your shirt on it, and now it's splintering. Definitely didn't want that kind of an end result to occur. But there isn't a theme, like as far as, it's so simplistic and so clean and so plain looking that you could, decorate it however you want. We have very minimal decorations in this, and I wouldn't even say we have a theme because we have so little things up here. We mainly have, but right. you could make it more of like a theme. If well, you and I've mentioned that I thought it would be nice if we did some photographs, put them up on the walls of some of our experiences and our destinations and that sort of thing. And even in the back, in the kitchen area, do a bunch of photos up on the the wall in there, That's... showing some of the places that we've camped at. But let me ask you this, it's been, well, it's been over a year. Are you happy with how it's held up and any issues? Very happy with the way that it's held up. I did have one minor problem on one of our camping trips, and that was we were on a camping trip where it rained really hard, and the way that we were parked and the way the roof on this camper is set up it must have been slightly pitched to one side. The water was just cascading off the side of the roof and running down on one of these side windows, and the window was actually leaking inside the the camper a little bit. Well, here after that evening when, when the rain subsided, I went out and looked. There are little weep holes on the outside of these windows and they made these windows that you could put them in right side up or upside down. You had weep holes at both the top and the bottom. None of those plugs were ever pulled out of there and that's why water was coming down the window and building up in the track and it wasn't able to drain out so filling the track up and draining inside. So after that I went out and I popped the plugs out of the bottom and I haven't had trouble with it since. And luckily it didn't leak long enough to get water down the wall and get things moldy and whatnot so I was grateful there but I mean, so far, one of the things that a lot of people have problems with in a camper is when it's sitting and it's sitting empty and it doesn't have heat in it. And then, then you go in it and you start to warm it up. It starts to have a musty smell to it. No, there's Not, nothing. There's nothing like that in here. So that's that's a good sign. That and it's a real good sign because tell them, Mr. Builder, do you remember when, when you flooded the inside out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you ever told them. Uh, she had to bring that up. Because we're not perfect people. They need to know that Rick makes mistakes too. I had a day when I had hooked up propane water heater in this thing. I had run the plumbing while I was doing the build, ran the, the tubing for the water to the sink in the kitchen. But then I got this propane water heater and, and plumbed it in and mounted it and I wanted to test it all out. So I went and I had the sink faucet to the sink open and I went ahead and hooked up street water to it and turned the water on in the back and got sidetracked fooling around with the, the water heater and wasn't thinking or paying attention. Well, when I put this sink in, in order to avoid uh, insects or rodents getting in when the camper sits for a long time and the trap dries out in the sink, I put a plug in the drain where it goes out underneath of the camper and I forgot to take that plug out. Sink faucets were open, so the sink filled up, overflowed, since it couldn't drain out, and I flooded the inside of the camper, and I, I got it pretty wet, and the way that it was sitting at the time, it was pitched downhill towards the nose, 
So all the water that ran over the counter and got on the floor ran in under the front cabinets and the refrigerator. So I came in here and one of the first things I did was crank the tongue up to get any water that managed to run under the cabinets to run back out and I continued mopping everything up and left the door open during the hot sunny days to make sure that everything- Didn't you have a fan or something? Yeah, make fan on and get it to dry out rapidly as it possible. It was in the drawers too, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I had to uh, take the silverware drawer out and dump it on the the couch. It had gotten water in it. Now, I haven't checked recently, but I smell nothing musty and I have not noticed anything. I know you checked before. and um, So I think you got that quick enough that it didn't really do to it any damage right so other than that little slip up and well you hitting the pothole and breaking well i don't know that you broke the axle it worked it got us home but it wasn't right it was bent a little yeah i it's weird because i looked at that axle and the way that the tire and rim were lined up versus the fender, it definitely looked like the tire was leaning out. Now the weird thing is, and when I got under and looked at the axle itself, again it appeared that the axle had a, a, a bend to it. And I wasn't seeing it on the opposite side. So I just assumed it was. Of course I took it to this dealer and they checked it or confirmed it. They just did what I asked them to do. They changed the axle. Had the new axle installed and I looked at it and this one looks like it's bent too when you look at it in relationship to the way the fender is situated on this thing but i know better because it's a brand new axle and when i get underneath and look at it from underneath just looking at the axle it does appear to be square the other one actually when i would look along the shaft of the axle versus the flange where the rim attached it didn't look like it was square or true mm -hmm. so I'm assuming that I was correct in my assumption. And even if I wasn't, this trailer, like I said, is like eight years eight old. Years. And I noticed that there was some play in the wheel bearings and whatnot when I checked it. And I didn't really care for the height. I wanted that changed. So if I'd have fooled around with that axle and had the springs changed and had the axle move from outside to inside, on the springs and if I had went and had all the bearings redone in it, it would have probably come close to costing me what it cost me to change this axle. And I did go from a drop axle to a straight axle which brought the trailer up in the air. And the reason I did that was in the future I'm contemplating putting fresh water and gray water tanks underneath. Now I have the clearance to do that. So you got interviewed by Patrick and your camper was put on New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. So I want to ask you what that was like. He's got a huge channel. So what was that like for you? Well, I was looking forward to it because I saw that, you know, Patrick had a pretty good sized channel. And there had also been some mentioning that it would probably help to promote our channel by doing that. The other thing is that Patrick has a, a system that he uses, a plan that he follows when he shoots a video. So he just basically repeats it. And what he does is discusses what he's going to do so that you know exactly how that video is going to take place. He'll talk about the fact that he's going to go around the outside, you know, first, and he will point to certain things so that nothing gets overlooked and everything gets, as much as the bill gets included in the video. So it makes it very easy. If you get to a loss for what to say next, he is right there ahead of you, prompting you and walking you through this video so that it proceeds smoothly and that uh, your whole story gets told. And I really kind of like that and admired that about the, the mm -hmm. thought process behind the way he shoots his videos. Because of the size of his channel, I must admit that I was a little intimidated, a little nervous. You didn't come across I, as nervous. No, but I, internally I felt it, and I don't think that as a result of that, because I was a little nervous, so I wasn't really up to par in my thinking process. Yeah. And I used to being the one that's doing the planning and the controlling, so it was a different position for me to be in that, during that video. So did you enjoy being interviewed? I did. Like I said, you can you can still enjoy something even though you're feeling a little bit under pressure. You know, it's like 
being in competitive sports, feeling the pressure of it, but you wouldn't want to be any any place else at that time. So that's kind of how I was with that video. So, well, good, because he may want to interview your van build when you do it. So now you'll be more used to the, to the second time around. Yeah. So you have followed him, his channel. How many views has your video gotten now for, on his channel? I just looked a little bit ago and uh, it was over 186,000. Wow. I don't think we have that much on our channel. <laughs> no, we don't even have all our videos together. Don't have 186 yeah. thousand. But he's yet. he's bigger and he's been around for a long time. So you're happy with with the results that you got from that video? That's as far as the views. And uh, I'm extremely happy with it. One of the other things that that I have done is I've gone back and just recently, in like the last month, I've looked at our video and the number of views that it had obtained versus some of the other videos that Patrick did around the same time. And for whatever reason, we were one of the highest viewed videos on his channel for the amount of time that that video has been up. Uh, there are some others that like, you know, for whatever reason went viral, you know, he's got others on there that the views are Mm -hmm. up in the million. I could be wrong, but I think you were only the second cargo camper conversion he's done it. And I think he's done more since then. But from the feedback that we got, you spoke well, you did a very good interview, but I wanted to see how it felt since you have your own channel going to somebody else's channel. In case you missed our interview on Patrick's channel, New Jersey Outdoor Adventures, I'm going to put a link to that right up here. Please consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Coming up, Rick is going to interview me because March 5th will be one year since we've had this YouTube channel. That's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. You all come back now, you hear?